So we're running this off grid at the moment uh, before I take you down there. So that's on 18. Um, got that running on cold flat out. It's only pulling like 600 watts. I'll keep that running while I go down there and I'll show you, um, show you what's happening down here. So check this out. So here's the multi 12 3000 120 amp inverter charger. That's uh, nice and neatly fitted there. We've done a fair bit of venting on this to get that, get that air out once this fan kicks in. There's the MPPT 130 that is taking care of the new 400 watt array that we fitted on the front. There's the 100 forward slash 50 MPPT solar controller that is taking care of the existing 700 that's pretty much maxed out. And there's the Enerdrive 40 plus DC to DC charger at the back here. So that one there is obviously vehicle charging and solar side input. So that doesn't do anything to do with the roof solar on this. Its job is portable solar and vehicle charging only. We've got the LMI bus system down here. So these are the LMI high current bus fuses here. And you know, labeled main 12 volt, Jack Anderson. He's got a black jack on this. Solar 400, Solar 700 and DC charger. So all labeled fuses, easy to see. You've got the Busman inverter fuse down there, all on 95 mil cable. There's the smart shunt, as you can see. So once again, where are the batteries? tunnel boot guys this has a tunnel boot so on the back wall of this are the power pool mercuries so I'll take you around and show you after but either way we've 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 got them right in that location so the distance between the high highest current which is the inverter is you know about a meter and that's the idea you uh, with the new standard having to separate batteries and put them in non-habitable areas if they are at a distance away obviously the gauge of the cable is going to have to increase and we you just have to deal with it, but um, tunnel boots are great, a great location to install your batteries to comply with the new standards uh, from November this year. Um, and you'll notice more and more people will be starting to do that and look, look towards that standard. So yeah, we've done that. If we did do a battery install under here, um, as per the Enerdrive uh, recommendations, which once again, thanks for bringing that out, guys. That has been a really good document to pass around. There's so many questions on it. I can just say, check this link out which I'll do for you guys. Check that out. It gives pictures, descriptions of what to do if you cannot fit a battery in a tunnel boot or a different area. The ideas behind it is it, it's trying to cover bases for installers because let's face it, a lot of people are upgrading their vans just like you guys may be interested in getting something like this done. And to have a big company like Enerdrive get behind the standards and lay it out easy for everyone to see and understand bloody good on you so cool bananas now these guys have got a bit of a setup for me I've got an induction cooker here and I've got the microwave ready to go and I've got the IBIS 4 running so I'm going to do a rundown on this one because I was able to fully charge the batteries last night and also I've got good sun today let's do some tests so first things first, we, we've got the induction cook in, uh, cooker here, not running at the moment. Uh, got the microwave, got a cup in there ready to go. And we've got the IBIS running now, so we'll go. We'll get that ramped up. It's actually in te at temperature in here at the moment, which is why the loads are sitting what they are. You can hear it ramp up. So that's the IBIS 4 ramping up. Right, cool. We will get the induction cooker going and I'll put that at temperature. So we'll go back to 18, like, treat it like the real world. We'll go 20, okay? So not many people run them at 16 or 17 uh, unless you're trying to cool your van down. Hot tip, evacuate that hot air out before you put your air conditioner on. If you evacuate all of that hot air out of your van before you put your air conditioner on, you will increase your efficiency a lot. You're, uh, you're not recycling hot air to try and cool it down. You've cooled the air down in form of natural convection through your windows, and then you are, you're starting the ball you know, a lot better than where you were. So I'm running that air conditioner and charging the battery at the same time, off grid, all completely from batteries. Let's get into these uh, discharges. So I'm gonna keep, keep the air conditioner cruising along, and we will simulate a cook on this brand new induction. So we go uh, that one and I believe boil. Yeah, that should have come on. So 
Let's see what the IBIS 4 is running at, plus an induction cooker. Now we'll whack the microwave on as well. So microwave, uh, induction cooker, and IBIS 4 air conditioning. All from batteries, guys. We're not plugged into the grid. This is free camping. This is what you do with one of our systems, especially when it's designed properly, installed properly, you know, with natural convection in mind for cooling. You, you get really good efficiency from the products. And using Paul's batteries, those Mercury's or the Scouts, they're just a high-end battery. There's that cup of water that would be all... Uh... Yeah, oh yeah, that's warm. <laughs> all right, we'll go again. Yep, that's on. So back on, that'd be... Induction cooker's brilliant. You know, that'll, that'll boil up pretty much now. It's already starting to bubble. So we're back on again. Air conditioner, induction cooker, and microwave simultaneously it's all data logged in front of you state of charge ac loads your solar controller there the whole show is right in front of you you really really can't go wrong by looking at this screen it's a really good screen to look at also got that one and then we got that one there that's your control screen so your inverter mode ac current limit if you're on the grid nice little picture here of the Lotus, beautiful. Yeah, you know, we're still running lights, of course. You know, lights. The fridge is on. You know, that obviously never turns off. You just keep these things running, and yeah, you know, this is this is cooking in the bush. You know, this is like you on the side of a road. This is warming up a, a quick meal. Ah, oh, fuck. You know, this is frying whatever you fry. Fry away. <laughs> cool you know if you run out of gas you don't run out of anything so got the uh washing machine on this one that will completely run for the inverter no dramas you know there's those outlets i spoke about we'll see how there's so they all work from the off grid at the moment now so that'll all work they're all the same they make there's, there's no difference there i'll make could probably swap them out for black ones uh, as he goes along but it's neither here or there so cool bananas now on this one we've done three ruby tags for our mate so these ones here um, are those little hockey puck things that you see us throw in so there are three of them he's got two in the fridge in here so one for freezer one for fridge but this one here is for his car fridge and you might be wondering how is that possible so he's he's got a, a, a big vehicle with a big canopy set up and he wants to be able to monitor the temperature of that fridge in here he can do that he'll throw that in his fridge in his canopy of his vehicle and he'll be able to look at that touch screen that i just showed you and he'll see the temperature and data log everything that's happening in there distance wise now the bluetooth in the servo gx is pretty average um it's it doesn't have a massive range so when you extend beyond uh, it varies obviously you want to put the little bluetooth dongle in to give you extended range we've done that for our mate in this so he he should get pretty good range and we've done the um, Mopeka sensor for him as well. So the, this is a water tank sensor. Once again, he's got his four wheel drive with a massive water tank in it and he wanted to be able to monitor it and find out what's going on with it. So he'll be able to log onto this screen, it's already synced up, and see his water level with, with dead, eye, dead eye dick accuracy of what water level he's got in that tank in his cruiser, some, you know, so many meters away. Just look at this touch screens, how cool. Now he can add, um, a whole bunch of these sensors. So if he put the LPG sensors in to monitor the LPG tanks that are on the drawbar of this, he can do that. You just you just buy them online. Um, Solar for RVs are probably the best place to get them from over in Melbourne. Just look them up online. I might put a link in here actually. So check out Solar for RVs. You can get all the Mopeka sensors. You can get all the Ruby tags. Those guys sell them over there. I don't sell them guys. So just um, I just love fitting them because they work. <laughs> um, so check them out, get them online, hit them up. They're pretty knowledgeable bunch of, bunch of people. And this will talk to your Victron system. All right, very, very accurate. Much better than those um, differential pressure sensors that were getting around for years. Uh, it's good how technology gets better and better as time goes on. So it comes with a full fitting kit. You can see the little 
little shroud so you, you get a little activator so you little you clean your bottom of your tank wherever it's going on you put that in place and that unscrews and then you position this up put a bit of jelly that it comes with straight up under your tank and set and forget i'm running one have since i've come out and i haven't i haven't damaged it yet you know you think being under the tank it's going to get damaged if you're really concerned about stones smashing it put a little guard over it or something maybe a removable panel um, for people with stone guards and um, you know bash plates under your tank unfortunately you have to do a cutout to allow the sensor to work but what you do is you take that cutout or get something larger and put it over it so it's removable that way you still gain access to it if you need to and it's completely out of the way very easy just touch it and you you're going to see it all here car fridge temp water tank temp freezer temp fridge temp it's all it's all right here car water tank yeah another temp notice that's showing temp that's right because they show temperature how good is that <laughs> forgot to mention it so yeah these the mode pickers will show temperature as well just part of the system and you know obviously it's you, you're measuring wherever it's attached to so if it's under your car it's going to show temperature under your car but either way it's, it's part of the system so yeah these are ultrasonic guys all right they're ultrasonic so it'll send the signal up to the top of the tank back down take a reading away you go really cool well we're still boiling away it's um well and truly been boiling for a while now and so we've got the air conditioner going it's getting quite humid in here i better turn that off it's getting steamy but yeah guys another big off-grid setup on this uh on this lotus and i'll i'll bring you outside actually i should tell you i should show you the solar we're pretty happy with how this extra 400 watts of solar has come up so come with me now and i'll walk you up here on the uh front boot area okay here we are so there are the four exotronic panels they look absolutely mint up here so we've got a full powder coated bracket running on the front edge as well as the rear individual brackets to not encase this in otherwise it would have created a bit of an oven um, we you know panels will get hot no matter what you do the idea is to keep them running as cool as possible so there are actually feet on the back of these so there's a foot there and a foot there vice versa and, you know so forth so uh, there's a bit of a breeze in the air now i can feel that now how do we block that off that air would not get through there as much as it is now because the wind is coming from the back of the van this way god those other panels are dirty aren't they <laughs> probably get more power out of that um, existing 700 watt array how do i uh, clean the panels um you can definitely tell that these are new <laughs> so yeah four exotronic 100s uh, got a 2S, 2S 1P system here, perfectly in lined. It just looks really mint, really happy with how this one's come up. And there we have it, guys. So, time to jump down. Whoa, getting tall for that. Well, 680 amp hours of lithium, all the Victron fruit, inverter charger. 1100 watts of solar, multi plus 12, 3120 amp inverter charger. You've seen the induction cook, you've seen the microwave run and the air conditioner all at the same time. No grid guys, no generator. This setup is a bloody good setup to get off grid. No more caravan parks, just roll up wherever you want, whenever you want, run the full show without compromise. Don't worry about booking into powered sites take an unpowered site you are fully self-sufficient with a setup like this thanks for watching again guys please like and subscribe i do these videos when i've got a few moments for a cheeky rundown for the customer so thanks for your support keep the ball rolling and we'll keep doing what we do best enjoy